Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how your environment affects you. obviously not in my house. I am at my parents' house, house sitting, taking care of their babies while they are on vacation. And so I've set up upstairs because it has the best lighting and room right now. And it's kind of difficult for the babies to come and uh, distract me, which is obviously not working. Yes, the Christmas tree is still up and it's gonna stay. So. Anyway, so let's get on with the topic of the video. So, how does your environment affect you? For a lot of people, they truly do not understand how important it is to really monitor how their environment affects them. So our environment affects us in three different ways. Physically, emotionally, and mentally. And what a lot of people don't understand is those actually all feed into each other. So physically to mentally, to your emotions. So do not underestimate the power of your environment and how it can impact you, help you, or hinder you. So let's start with physically. So for physically, it can. there's three areas that I'm just gonna touch on, but this is not extensive. These are just three areas I just want you to be mindful of. So the first one is nature. Are you disconnected with nature? Do you have enough light? Are you, you know, taking things out of the way? Are you connecting with your puppies, things of that sort? Are you getting enough sunshine? A lot of time we underestimate the power of nature to have a positive effect on us. And yes, I do know some of us have allergies. I am one of those. But sometimes just even just sitting in front of a big bright window can have a very, very positive effect on ourselves. The thing I wanna talk about is people. People can physically impact you in a variety of different ways. So. Do these people hinder you? Do they encourage you? Do they cause you to, to not feel as capable? Do they lift you up? Do they treat you badly? Do they help you grow? Do they encourage you to continue to be the person that you wanna be? You are a summation of the five people that you spend the most time with. So make sure those five people that you spend the most time with are helping you rather than hindering you. And if they are, try to put some distance between you and them or have a conversation with them if you need to, to, to help direct them and how they can best help you. Sometimes just saying that they, you know, speaking from the heart to them and what, whatever is happening is gonna have a very positive effect on what's going on in that relationship and it might change it. It also just may not change anything and that's okay as well and you can distance yourself from that person. And that's totally allowed. We change as human beings throughout our lifetime and we're never the same person twice. So if somebody that once serves you no longer serves you, that's okay. Try to distance yourself and move on and introduce yourself to new people. That's the wonderful thing about social media is a lot of time you can connect with people that have similar goals and dreams that are trying to accomplish the same things and can help you achieve those goals. Surroundings. This is how people commonly think about how their environment affects you. What do you surround yourself with? Do you have so much clutter that you feel clustered in and that you just feel claustrophobic? Can you eliminate some of that? Do you have happy pictures that remind you of happy times that surround you? Do you have happy things that just make you happy every time you smile? Every smile, every time you see them. So something that we have is we have a picture of our wedding, me and AJ on our counter that I, we see every day. We also have a sketch drawing of R2D2 just because we're both nerds. And the last one that's something that I've kind of required, which is a salt and pepper shaker in the shape of pineapples. And they make me super happy every time I see them. And of course, our wonderful babies are something else that surround us with happiness. Is you have a superior control over a lot of this. So start to set boundaries and things that you need. If you need personal space and time like that, use that to your advantage. Clean your space. Find a way that works because sometimes we say we are messy people when in reality that's something that we're just telling ourselves. So maybe try cleaning it and see if you have a better workflow, whatever the case may be. This has a, the ability to influence and facilitate your behavior and your thoughts and patterns because if you always see something like this or it's a constant reminder for you, 
then maybe it's time to make a change and try to do something else that positively impacts you, okay? Something else that you can do lastly in this section is you can create or reduce your stress. So do your surroundings, the people in nature, do they create stress for you or do they reduce stress for you? A lot of people try to add things to their routines when in reality they should be really focusing on maybe reducing a, a piece of stress one thing at a time versus adding one more thing to think about. So think about how can you reduce stress for yourself in one area. So the next area that I want to talk about is mentally. So a lot of time you see you're mentally affected by physically and your emotions. So there's four areas that I want to touch on that really impact you. It's your outlook, thoughts, habits, and patterns, and expectations. So those are four areas that mentally that we really start to see this come to fruition. So your outlook, are you a pessimist? Are you an opportunist? Or whatever the case may be, do you always try to look on the positive thing? Just taking time to work on your perspective and your outlook can have a ginormous impact on how your environment affects you. Because if you are constantly always looking for the negative thing in the world, you are always going to find it. So really start to focus on more positive things whenever possible and just changing that thought pattern. The next thing that you need to think about is your thoughts. Your thoughts are once created in your brain and the next time they are created in our reality. No matter what you believe in, our thoughts continue to impact our beliefs, our actions, our cycle of thoughts, our outlooks, whatever the case may be. So if you are constantly having negative thoughts about yourself, how you look, what you're doing, whatever the case may be, it's going to impact you and your actions. So focus on trying to train yourself to have new thoughts. Don't try, do not try. Focus on retraining your thoughts. It's going to take time to redo that. Affirmations are a great way, but anytime you catch yourself in a negative or a thought that you no longer want to have, rewrite it in your head and say it out loud so that way you can do that. So if you always say, man, I am fat, um, I'm never going to have the body that I dream of. When in reality, you should be saying, I am getting healthier every day. I am working every day to have my body of my dreams. Okay. The next thing that I want you to think about is your habits. Oh, really? I got slimed. Okay. The next thing I want you to think about is your habits and patterns. What you do every day is going to build up over time and create your reality. So do you have habits and patterns that benefit you or don't benefit you? Do you come home and you just collapse on the couch and you just watch Netflix and everything and detox where in reality, maybe you could be cooking yourself a healthy meal or you could go heat up a meal you already made on the weekend or you could go to the gym or you could do a home workout. What are you doing that can help you become the person that you want to become because obviously what you're doing now is not helping you become that person. So you can't continue doing the same thing and expect a different result. That's the definition of insanity. You have to start making changes. Now I'm not saying to make a drastic change overnight. Focus on one change and one habit at a time and work on changing that slowly. The last thing that I want you to consider is expectations. What are your expectations for yourself? the people around you, and what does that mean? Are you voicing these expectations? Are you voicing these expectations you have for yourself? Because if you're not telling people what your expectations are and then they're failing to meet them, how are they supposed to meet them if you never tell them what they are? Also, that goes for yourself. Are you never telling yourself what those expectations are? Are you never really setting high enough expectations for yourself or a standard so that way you can meet those? Also, maybe you need to let go of some of your expectations so that way you can reach what you want. Maybe these expectations are not real. And in reality, maybe you need to just be open to what happens, okay? So think about your expectations that you set for yourself and others around you and be willing to voice that and change them if you need be. The last area that I wanna cover is emotions. A lot of time our emotions are a summation of the previous two, physically and mentally. So a lot of time they will boil up and show their, their raging face whenever we least like it because we've reached a breaking point. Now something I really want you to acknowledge is that you should not feel bad for your feelings. Do not feel bad. A lot of time we need to feel these things and allow ourselves to feel from them so we can move past them and acknowledge them. 
Now, do not punish yourself for these things. Just acknowledge that's how you feel and understand why you feel that way. A lot of people just suppress these things where, when in reality we need to face them so we can move on. Maybe you feel this way because you feel like your life is out of control when in reality you are passing off the power of your life to somebody else rather than taking control and responsibility for your own life. Okay? So that can be in your habits or patterns. Maybe you need to say no to more things. Whatever the case may be, but you need, to, you need to own up to what your emotions are and be okay with that. But then also you need to have a reality check in how you are reacting to your emotions. Are you immediately reacting to your emotions versus acknowledging them? Maybe you do need to cry, but does lashing out really fix anything? In reality, maybe you need to sit down and talk with somebody with whatever the case may be. And it's okay to have those emotions, but you need to acknowledge how you feel and then work to move forward from there. So that way, if that's a way you don't want to feel, you're not always in that setting. And the last thing I just want you to cover is your actions as a result to all of these things will dictate whether you stay in the same position that you're in or you will move on. So if you do not like that the area that you're in, you have the power to change it. Just start taking steps today to make it happen. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below on the thing that you enjoyed the most of this video or a tip that you can apply immediately. And let me know what you liked the best. And please don't forget to subscribe. There's more content coming for you guys. And I have a series starting very, very soon. And I'm so excited to share that with you. So until next time, I'll see you next time. Bye.